welcome on this the third Sunday of Lent. It's the 7th of March 2021. And in our reading today we hear of Jesus casting out the money changers from the temple. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. Jesus bringing back the holiness to the house of God, a place where pilgrims can come and be close to the Father. And so let's hear that reading of the cleansing of the temple. John chapter 2. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, Take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, 
destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. They then said, This temple has been under construction for forty-six years, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. In our Gospel reading today, we hear of Jesus casting the money changers out of the temple and those selling sheep and doves. Take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. Jesus can see what's going on in the temple. There's exploitation of the people. Jesus is concerned for the individuals who have come to worship God. And coming to worship God, they have to pay a temple tax and they have to make a sacrifice. But they can't use ordinary money. Instead, they have to exchange their everyday money for temple money. And the money changers will charge a commission. The temp temple tax could be a day's wages. And the commission charged for changing the money could be another day's wages. And many of these people coming up to Jerusalem would be very poor people from the countryside who have come to worship. But the priests and the money changers are exploiting them. And Jesus is not happy. He's concerned for the individual. In this last week, the Chancellor gave his budget and there were lots of figures being banded about, huge amounts at stake. And we can often lose sight of individuals when we start talking about numbers. When we talk about the number of people unemployed, the number of businesses at risk. And our eyes can glaze over. Jesus looks at the big picture, but as he does so, he's aware that the big picture is made up of hundreds of little pictures. And each of those little pictures is an individual, a person, a person whom he loves. Jesus sees the big picture of exploitation, and he sees the small picture of an individual with little to give, being exploited by those who should know better. To follow Jesus means to go beyond the numbers and to look at the individuals concerned, to be concerned for them and their lives, to be aware of them and their needs. What would Jesus do today? in our current world, as the numbers stack up of hospital admissions, of businesses failing, and in other countries, of the disasters in Yemen and refugee camps across our world, Jesus is concerned with each of those individuals who to us are just numbers. Jesus makes a whip overturns the tables and drives them out of the temple. My house shall be a house of prayer. You have made it a den of thieves. Jesus won't put up with the exploitation of individuals because they're being robbed, not just of their money, but also of the sacred place to which they've come to be close to God. Instead, it's become a commercial premises. And the commercial premises, as I've said, of exploitation. The people are robbed not just of their money, but of the sacred place where they can meet God. And Jesus, therefore, restores the place to what it should be, 
in his concern for the individuals and their ability to be close with God. Taking away the unfair exchange of the money changers and the animal sellers. But another exchange is made as well. A new style of worship. Jesus, speaking to the woman at the well, will tell her that the hour is coming when people won't worship in Jerusalem, but in spirit and in truth. A new form of worship, which doesn't depend upon buildings, but on him. A new temple which will be raised up in three days, as he speaks of the temple of his body. Faith that doesn't rely on a building in a city, but on a person who invites us to walk with him. And a person who, despite the huge crowds who surround him so often, seeks out the individual, touches them, and changes their lives forever. The individuals matter most. The big picture is made up of hundreds of little pictures. Jesus is concerned with both. By renewing and restoring the individual, he can change the big picture with faith and love. And today, as we watch the news and hear figures banded about, it is for us to look beyond the figures and see the people and to care, to love and to pray. Amen. The prayer for today. Eternal God, give us insight to discern your will for us, to give up what harms us, and to seek the perfection we are promised in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And finally, a prayer of blessing. Christ, give us grace to grow in holiness, 
to deny ourselves, take up our cross and follow him, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be among us and remain with us always. Amen.